I have been very real in my commentary about comic book sales since the channel began. And a lot of times I get pushback. I'll have people come into the comments, say I'm an idiot. I've even had people make other videos and say like, God, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Actually, comic book sales are amazing. And they always want to reframe the argument. It's like, you know, DC and Marvel are doing great because My Hero Academia is really hot and Chainsaw Man is just really better than ever these days. Dog Man is kicking ass. So therefore, you know, the Krakoan era of X-Men is actually really selling like gangbusters. Just some of the dumbest logic you've ever heard in your life. And a lot of these comic book show websites have held water for these people. And when I say these people, you kind of know who I'm talking about. And I do want to point this out. If I ever say something about someone directly here and make some commentary on the channel, that isn't a license to go out there and like instigate anything with those people. If they want to talk to me, they know where to find me. If you go out there and say, yeah, well, Wes said you suck. Well, you're just kind of an asshole. I never asked you to do that. And in fact, I don't want you to do that. People are allowed to have their opinions, even if they're really bad, stupid opinions, like the opinion that's been going on for so long that comic book sales are just amazing. Well, they can't hold the water anymore. You can't really hold back the narrative. And I think we're about to see some cataclysmic numbers when it comes to the direct market. We know that the sales figures for all of 2022 are pretty much compiled now. They're starting to sort them out. You know, what does the entire comic book market look like? What do graphic novel sales look like? What's the direct market look like? You know, what do periodic sales look like? All that kind of stuff. And some of these websites are getting ready to distribute this really bad news by putting it out there gradually. So in the entirety of all the things that have happened within comic books in 2022 and just how bad it was actually comes to light. You're like, well, I kind of knew most of it, but they only told me like a little bitty increments. So maybe it won't seem so bad. I'm talking specifically about this ICV2.com article where they stated after two years of land office business, does that mean landmark business? I don't, what does land office mean? Let me look it up. Maybe it's actually something. The government office recording dealings in public land. I'm going to say they meant landmark business. It was almost inevitable that a stratospheric rise in comic sales would come back to earth. And comic sales are really just a mixed bag with three main prongs, new releases, graphic novels, and back issues. New comic sales have taken a beating over the last year. While the graphic novel category is largely held steady, back issues remain a wild horse. That's usually a good bet. Hey, listen, we're all getting screwed over in this, right? If you're a fan of DC or Marvel comics, you're getting really bad stories. They're ruining the heroes. They're intentionally hiring the worst creators possible. You don't get much entertainment return for your dollar when you support Marvel and DC comics these days. But the people getting hurt the worst are the retailers. The people that actually own the local comic shops that make up the direct market throughout North America. DC and Marvel have went out of their way to destroy their own band base and run them off. And obviously, the small businesses that relied on those people to come in there and spend their dollars every single Wednesday are the ones that are going to suffer the most. And they're finally speaking out. As we're getting ready for just how devastatingly bad comic book sales were in the direct market in 2022, this is what Phil Boyle, owner of Coliseum of Comics, which has 12 stores in Florida, had to say about sales. New comics overall are down 3.2%. Within that, DC comics are down 10.4%. Marvel Comics are down 3%. Image Comics are down 27.1%. That's insane. Boom Studios are down 28%. Dark Horse Comics are down 25.6%. Indie Comics are down 36.7%. And those are the publishers that he provides. You go, well, he said it was 3.2%. Most of those were in double digits. And over 25% drops, in fact. It's because his manga sales are actually up 28%. So he's being smart and investing more in manga and offering that to his customers. And that's helping to keep the sales up. He also says in other categories, back issue sales are up 7% and Funko Pop sales are up 29.4%. That's right. In all likelihood, the direct market is more likely to be saved by manga than DC or Marvel Comics, their primary business partners for 30 or 40 years now. The smarter retailers out there, and Yule Carter is definitely one of those, have been offering manga for some time now, and you'll see the manga sales are getting bigger and bigger. I pointed this out last year when we were looking at the top graphic novel sellers within the direct market themselves. You would never see manga until 2022, and then all of a sudden you saw one manga in the top 10, and then you saw two manga in the top 10 as far as graphic novel sales from the direct market, not the bookstore where they absolutely dominate the market there. Nobody trusts these publishers anymore. 
And everyone's like, DC sales are still good. No, they're not. Now we're starting to hear from the retailers who have had enough. They're fed up. They're no longer going to hide DC and Marvel Comics' little secret. They're no longer going to sit back while the publishers absolutely screw them over by putting garbage product out on their shelves that they can't sell. Really, the only reason DC has only dropped 10% instead of 30% is because they push so hard into the variant cover schemes that Marvel Comics have been notorious for for decades upon decades. DC just never really played that game. Now their sales are so bad, they have no choice. But what we're seeing from these comic book retailers is they realize if I buy 500 issues of Batman one once they reboot it so i can get that one in 500 variant cover i'm going to be stuck with 450 copies of the a cover that i'll never be able to sell just so i can sell that one variant cover for 500 bucks to you know to one of my key customers is it really worth it and you're going to see a lot more retailers pulling out of that space and dc comic sales and marvel comic sales are going to continue to decrease john robinson owner of graham crackers comic shops 13 stores, mostly in the metro Chicago area. Overall, chain-wide sales are down 4%. Backlist graphic novel sales are down 10%. New indie comics, except Marvel and DC, are down 5%. And back issues are down 1%. Chicago is an enormous metropolitan area. If you would think there would be a few areas that would be impervious to the changing demographics and interest of readers themselves nationwide, it would be a place like a Chicago, a New York, a Los Angeles, a Dallas. For a chain the size of Graham Crackers in Chicago, a 4% decrease in sales is probably damn near cataclysmic as far as their bottom line and their ability to continue on with a chain of shops that big throughout the metropolitan area. Absolutely shocking. It's not just the smaller shops in rural areas that are being affected the most. We're seeing shops in the biggest areas be affected the most. We did see that Brian Hibbs had to sell his second shop in the San Francisco area. That's another really robust market when it comes to the size of the city and the people available to go in there and buy comics from them. The interest in DC and Marvel is not there nationwide. It's disappearing. They're absolutely getting stomped by manga. The debate is over. When someone tries to antagonize you on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and they say, no, really, comic sales are great, just laugh at them. The debate is settled. This is what Jen King, owner of Space Cadets Collection Collection in Oak Ridge, North Texas, had to say. Overall, her store sales are down 3.5%. Graphic novel sales are down 8%. All comics, new and back issue combined, are down a staggering 48%. All items in the store, not comics or graphic novels, are up 6%. That's right. The products keeping a comic shop afloat nowadays are all items, not comics or graphic novels. And the fact that you still have people carrying water, lying about this stuff, as people are getting screwed over nationwide, is what really pisses me off. It doesn't make me mad that people are stupid. It doesn't make me mad that they're lying. It's the people that are getting hurt by the lies. There are people at Marvel that really think their X-Men line is hot. They don't really have access to the marketing office. They don't know all the sales, but they keep getting told by idiots, oh, yeah, X-Men's real hot right now. But if you actually go down to the comic book retailers, you would know it's ice fucking cold. No one likes these comic books. The only products keeping some comic shops afloat these days are everything but comic books. If that's not the most embarrassing line you've ever heard in your life, I don't know what to tell you. But the comic industry doesn't have any shame. They'll never admit that they're wrong, even though the facts have been staring them in the face for years upon years. And it's even worse when you start getting outside the direct market, the specialty stores that have been the main sales generators for periodic comics. When we talk about graphic novel sales, the majority of those sales are actually in the bookstore market where it's absolutely worse. Recently, there was a tweet out there where someone was pointing out the difference between the manga section and the comic book section in their Barnes and Noble, and everyone freaked out. There are like 8 million views on that tweet or something. According to MPD Books Gain data, manga takes up 53% of the graphic novels market where sales are concerned. It grew 4.1% year over year in 2022, while its next competitor in the market, juvenile fiction, decreased 1.4%.
The genre still holds 26% of the market share, but most of the market categories are in decline. The largest point loss went to superhero adult genre as it lost 1.7 points, leaving it with just 4% of the market share. Once people don't have to rely on DC and Marvel, they don't even think about them anymore because there's no interest in their stories. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the responses to that tweet that I just mentioned, there's some really ludicrous stuff. I do want to show two of the dumbest responses that I absolutely saw. One responder said, manga has been more popular than Marvel or DC comics in the West for decades now. So now we're going to change the narrative to manga has been outselling traditional superhero comics in America for decades now, which is an absolute fucking fabrication. I've went back and I've looked at the numbers. I've looked at them a lot. Yes, manga did overtake sales of traditional North American superhero comics about five years ago. Absolutely changing history to fit their narrative because there's so much fucking cope around this stupid debate that is not a debate anymore. There are more comic readers in America today than there ever had been in the history of the world. They're just not reading the traditional American publishers like Marvel and DC Comics because they dropped the ball so badly, yet everyone wants to keep making excuses for these guys even though they destroyed the entire fucking industry. Another really stupid take. As someone who reads Cape Comics, most of them are not accessible to casual readers, and that's the biggest issue. <laughs> now that is some smooth brain material right there. American superhero comics are not accessible. More people in this world know the origin story for Batman, for Superman, for Iron Man, for Captain America, for Hulk, for all of the superheroes at DC and Marvel Comics. You actually know who the superhero is, their powers, and what define them before you get into the comic shop. No other brand of comic books in the world has that kind of awareness when it comes to the characters and who they actually are. It's pretty easy to jump into fucking Batman right now. Now, I understand the story takes a lot of detours, and I do think they would be smart to make a Batman Volume 1 all the way up to a Batman Volume 1000 whatever. But I will agree there's an accessibility issue. It's not the content. It's not the heroes. It's not the stories of the past or whatever. They just aren't fucking accessible because DC and Marvel have dropped their digital strategy so bad. We've seen through what they have done with Suasha and their Shonen Jump app that actual interest in digital comics leads to physical sales but dc and marvel have not jumped on that whatsoever they did recognize about 15 years ago there was an accessibility problem with american comics but they totally fucked up the assessment they thought the accessibility was there's too many straight white heroes we need to remove all the heroes that people know and like and replace them with new diversity heroes so the comic books will actually be accessible now. As if manga is the most culturally diverse array of heroes and stories in the world. How is a fucking manga about volleyball more accessible than Superman, genius? Just think about what you're saying. It's the dumbest arguments in the history of the world. And everybody wants to make excuses for DC and Marvel. There are no more excuses. DC and Marvel had fucked this entire thing up, they put people out of business, and they're the reason that comic books are suffering in North America. They're the reason people don't want to read American comic books anymore. They're starting out with kids' comic books, and then they're moving right along into manga. They're not even stopping by and saying hello to Batman or Spider-Man or any of the other amazing heroes. The stories suck right now. They've run their audience off. They're not paying for good art anymore. The paper sucks. There's no fucking digital strategy. And they have no one to blame but themselves for the state of the direct market the way it is right now. And we are about to get some abysmal news when it comes to sales and growth in the direct market. It's actually worse in the book market. I broke this down. These are the scariest sales numbers you will possibly ever see in your life. You will not believe them until I break them all down. You have to watch this right now. There's also a link in the video description.